right. Being Boss, a podcast for creative entrepreneurs from Emily Thompson and Kathleen Shannon. Welcome to episode 18, Collaborate Like a Boss. Today's episode is all about creative collaboration and partnering up. We're going to chat about the ups and downs of collaborating with another creative or multiple creatives and tricks for creating dreamy partnerships that work. Yes. But first, an <laughs> announcement. We got an announcement. All right. So um, our first secret episode is live and ready for download over on our website. Um, this episode is all about cultivating confidence for the creative entrepreneur. You can find out more and sign up to get it at lovebeingboss.com. And I think about, I think in that secret episode, I talk about getting a psychic reading, don't I? You do? Yeah, that's that one. <laughs> we were going to make a secret episode on like woo-woo business practices and I decided just to combine it all. You did. I combined the confidence and the woo-woo. Actually, it was just a little, a little, was it foreshadowing for the woo-woo episode yeah, to come? Which we need to do that one. I'm I excited agree. to do that one. That's going to be a fun one. We'll definitely do it. And we'll be sending out secret episodes. The plan right now is to do about one per quarter. So one mm -hmm. secret episode every three months. So be sure to sign up for that list, our newsletter list. No, I, that's not what I want to say. Sorry, delete that. <laughs> delete. We'll do. I'll, I will, Apple Z. That. Apple Z. <laughs> uh, we, we plan on putting out a secret episode once every three months. So be sure to sign up for that at lovebeingboss.com and you'll – be sure to get the new secret episodes once we release them. Mm -hmm. All right. So, okay. In today's episode, I want to talk about creative collaborations. It's a topic that's been on our minds for a while now. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just kind of want to give a little bit of backstory about how this topic came to be. Um, I went into business with my sister four years ago, and it certainly had its up and ups and downs. Um, but it's mostly been awesome because we inherently trust each other. Uh, we're sisters, we get along great, and we have each other's backs no matter what. Um, everything was just split 50-50. It made sense. But that said, I've been super hesitant to partner up with anyone else ever. Like even in college, I hated group doing like the group work. Yeah, um, I was always the one that did all the work. I was that one that was like pissed at everybody because no one else was pulling their weight, so I was doing everybody's job for them. I was always <laughs> with people who did the work, um, and some of them are my friends to this day, but they like to do the work between the hours of like midnight and 6 a.m., <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> and, and I have always been a sleeper between the yep. hours of midnight and 6 a.m., so um, that was always frustrating for me. But anyway, so it really wasn't until um, we did Being Boss that I really partnered up with someone else. And so I think that we wanted to talk a little bit about our collaboration. And yeah. for me, it sparked collaborations with other creatives. It's really given me the confidence to branch out a little bit beyond just my own family whenever it comes to creative collaborations and partnering up. Um, so what about you, Emily? Like, what's your background in collaborating? Sure. I've, I've actually done a couple of them over the years. So whenever I started my, like, life as a creative entrepreneur, I was a jewelry maker. And it really sort of started then. I remember the first, like, notable collaboration that I did was with a – was with like an Etsy friend of mine like seven, six, seven years ago or something. And uh, I made jewelry and she was a stationary designer. And so we decided to to join forces and like and and combine our followings um, to do and do a um, what was it? It was a stationary and jewelry combo pack. And so it was with uh, Viva La Violet. Her name is Heather. Um, and now she's a WordPress designer. But she um, she loved Alice in Wonderland. And I had just had Lily and was totally into like cutesy, girly things like that too. So we did two or like product collaborations where she designed stationery and I designed jewelry pieces. And we had two like gift sets that we did. Um, and it was a really easy easy, fun collaboration where she designed the packaging and I did order fulfillment. And we both put them in our Etsy shops and it was a really fun way. Like even then, I didn't even realize what I was doing then. It was just like, 
us wanting to do something together. And it was really sort of a fun project for us to do. And we, we split the weight, or the weight of the projects equally and, and did, our, did our own things. We were able to, to sort of share our followings with each other, like even back then. Um, and since then, like, I guess they've sort of like grown <laughs> in size, my collaborations, because that one was just a really easy one that we just sort of pulled off, like without too much planning. Um, a couple years ago, I did a, um, I did a website template that was designed by Jeff Jessica Swift and I developed it and we put it, uh, for sale on my site. Um, there was, there was that fun workshop that you and I tried that time. Remember that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that was awesome. That was awesome. We sold so, <laughs> zero tickets. No, we sold one ticket. <laughs> I know. I wonder if that one person who bought that ticket listens to Being Boss now. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Well, if so, hi. <laughs> <laughs> So, so we, we, we had the, the failed attempt at a, co a collaboration a long time ago. Um, now my Indie Boom projects are really creative collaborations every time I do one. Um, so my Indie Boom projects are anywhere from four to 12 months of branding, website, and strategy. Um, and as a small studio, I don't do it all myself. Like I'm not trying to do it all myself. So sometimes I collaborate with Braid um, for the, the personal branding and business visioning portion of those projects. Um, sometimes we bring in copywriters, and so um, or my which is Lexi Content from Atlanta. They're adorable and hysterically amazing people. Um, Abraham Rowe Photography is a local local business that I use a lot for for branding photography for my clients. So really, like my daily work is kind of creative collaborations. Um, so starting with that fun jewelry and stationery collaboration years ago, it's definitely how I've built my business, and I absolutely love doing collaborations. You know, I want to jump in and say that I feel like even the work that I do with my clients is very collaborative mm -hmm. um, because of the process that we take them through. They're in every step of the way. Yeah. Um, so that feels very collaborative. But then we also have a couple of employees. And then, um, as you mentioned, you and I were partnering up on Indie Boom projects and branding mm -hmm. projects. Um before we started being boss together. And yeah. then also, I mean, I would even say um, we, we've just now ventured into working with other contractors, such as writers. We work with um, Erica Midkiff. She's oh, an amazing yeah. content coach. And she yeah. actually, we actually collaborated with her recently and hired her to help us with our own content for our big braid method e-course that we're about to launch in June. I can't yeah. wait. I can't wait. <laughs> anyway, um, but I think that there's something different to kind of working with contractors and collaborating with clients versus really partnering up on a project yeah. with another well, yeah. creative. And, and, and maybe that's, there's definitely a line in between partnering and just general collaborating. Um, but really, when you think about it, the same rules apply to both, whether you're just collaborating on a quick like blog post yep. or you're partnering up on a business venture. Like I think the same rules and, um, and like etiquette sort of fall in line for both scenarios. So I think we're going to be talking about both today. Let's we are. So I asked our Facebook group, um, what they thought about collaborations and here were some of the comments that we got there. Um, our friend Trista says, I like the idea of collaborating, but it would need to be the same kind of chemistry as being in a relationship with someone. Even then, I couldn't see myself collaborating creatively with my partner. I'm fiercely independent and very protective of my vision. So the synchronicity would have to be something absolutely stellar. I've never felt it with anyone, but have always wanted to be a part of an amazing team of creatives that make a project happen. The sum being bigger than any of the parts, so to speak. And I love that last line she said, mm -hmm. the sum being bigger than any of the parts. Because I feel like that's um, what I've created with Braid Creative and then especially with you with Being Boss. Both of those entities are so much bigger than I could have ever done um, by myself. So yeah. I loved her comment. I agree. Um, we also have another comment from Erica that says, I love the idea of creative collaborations, but honestly have no idea how to go about setting one up. There are so many creatives that I'd love to work with, 
but I have zero idea how to reach out to, reach out and ask. Also, how do you best sum up an agreement so neither party gets screwed? And a lot of people piped in and they were like, yes, to what Erica says. So we'll definitely be talking about that a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, Allison here says, I've been approached about collaborating, but I'm kind of paralyzed when I think of the logistics of it. And that's the part that really always got me whenever it came to collaborating as well. Mm-hmm. Allison says, I have no idea what standard on the financial end of it. Plus, a huge part of the benefit to the side hustle is that I don't have, I don't ever have to take anyone else into consideration when I make a decision, unlike yeah. <laughs> at the day job. Oh, I agree. That's some good pain points there. <laughs> um, all right. Carrie wrote in and said, I have always done creative work solo and in private. I know this stems from fear more than anything, and it is something I've struggled with for a long time. I've seen amazing things happen out of good collaboration and would love to experience it, but how to get started is a mystery to me. I fear falling into a leader slash follower dynamic, and that doesn't seem like a formula for greatness. Yeah, I included Carrie's comment because I really want to talk about that, the dynamic of a partnership and a collaboration. I think that that's really important. And so, yeah, I like her comment. All right. And our final one is from Jill. And she says, collaboration is scary because I always have to make compromises. Also, there are always egos to contend with, my own included. I believe in but struggle with being gracious if the other person has the better idea. I think this is funny because, I mean, if you come to me with a better idea, Emily, I'm like, amen. I'm so glad I didn't have to think of that one. (laughs) The logistics of getting credit and getting paid also worry me. How to structure a contract to take that stuff into consideration. All right. So we're going to be talking about all of this stuff Mm -hmm. today. I'm super excited to dig in. So I think that the first thing whenever it comes to a creative collaboration and really the first way that we start every podcast we do is about getting into the right mindset. So I would say a good way to get into the right mindset whenever it comes to creative collaborations is to start small. And that's Mm -hmm. the theme that comes up in a lot of our podcasts is just (laughs) start small, one step at a time. Mm -hmm. Um, So I would say... Um, finding someone that you have really great brainstorming sessions with, that can be a collaboration. Um, Or smaller project work together. So, for example, before hiring an employee, maybe just send them some project work. The same goes for collaborating and um, doing bigger projects together, like a podcast. (laughs) Yeah, yep. It is all about starting, starting small. And, like, you can even start with something as easy as, like, a blog series or, um, or God, I mean, the, the product collaboration that I did with Heather seven years ago, um, it, it was put none of, or neither of us out any money whatsoever. Um, it was just a little bit of our time. Like there was no investment other than two people who were already friends wanting to get together to sort of do this thing. Um, so we started really, really small and the return was small, but it's obviously, it obviously got me into the, the mindset of collaborations being this easy thing that you just do. So start small. Start with something really, really small and then work your way up from there. I think another big mindset thing, and this is probably even more than starting small, for me, getting in the right mindset of collaborating, is to explore the worst case scenario, but then also the best case scenario. So I, um, before you and I even started being boss, I was like, okay, What's the worst case scenario? What could happen? And I think that the worst case scenario is that uh, we both get burnt out and we end up hating each other and we're not friends anymore. Right. But, but then again, is that actually going to happen? <laughs> right. I mean, there would have to be a lot of miscommunication along the way. And so once we identify that that's the worst case scenario, then we can kind of work backwards from there and say, okay, how do we keep the worst case scenario from happening? And right. I think it was basically we just need to have regular conversations mm-hmm. all the time. Emily and oh. I, whenever we're not um, emailing, we're like chatting through Evernote Sometimes we're even texting and we try and keep clear boundaries. So even when we're texting, um, I'm like, oh, sorry, I'm texting you. I (laughs) meant to put that in Evernote. Right. It's kind of all the same. Like we're, we are touching base. I mean, wouldn't you say that we're probably talking once a day in some way or another? Like if I ever have a day where I'm not talking to you, I'm like having 
caffeine withdrawals. <laughs> I start to miss you. <laughs> I know. So, so yeah, we're definitely consistently talking. Um, and, and that's going to keep that worst case scenario of us like getting pissed at each other from happening because there's that constant, uh, constant connection going and we're, there's nothing bad happening. And if something does start happening where like I'm starting to get miffed because of whatever, I can't even imagine what would go wrong. Um, but we're talking so much like you're going to pick up on that and then we can fix it quickly or whatever that would be. That would never happen. I would tell you if I was mad. Um, but, um, but yeah, I think, I think going after that worst case scenario and realizing that it's not, probably going to happen unless you really just screw everything up. Um, But also that idea of starting small allows you to sort of slowly build that proof that you need to show you that you actually can do this and that it's worth it or it's fun or whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish for yourself. I want to be sure to talk about best case scenario too, because I think it's easy to fall into the fear of worst case scenario, but best case scenario. So one of the things that you and I did, Emily, whenever we started this podcast, and that I think is good for anyone starting a creative collaboration or business together is to set goals and to imagine what the best case scenario is. And, you know, it's funny because um, I think that sometimes you can set your goals like really small so you can reach them easier, which I that's a whole separate conversation on goal setting. Right. <laughs> but best case scenario, I mean, I feel like we've already gone beyond our best case scenario. And now yeah. we're having to create new best case scenarios. We are. Um, we are. So- we did. We, we set both levels of goals. We met the ones that would be easy enough to reach so that, like, we weren't being sad that we weren't reaching our goals. <laughs> but then we did, we did make those, those best case scenario ones. And once you reach those, especially it's all worth it. And so even if it is hard or you're going to have to give up a little bit of control or whatever it is that, that makes you not want to do these things, you'll quickly find out that the benefits that come from collaborating totally outweigh this idea that you're going to give up creative control or you're going to have to ask permission from someone else before you make a decision. Like those things don't matter anymore. And this is coming from someone who has serious authority issues. (laughs) 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 Something that I talk about a lot and you just, you get used to it. It it becomes, it is a partnership. So I don't know. It has to come. And and I like what um, Trista said. Was it Trista about it feeling like a relationship, like you should have yeah. those hell yes, let's do this kind yes. of feelings whenever it comes to collaborating. And I guess that that just depends on the size of the collaboration too. So the bigger the project, the mm-hmm. more important I think it is to have those feelings. Um, otherwise, again, start small, dip your toe in the water with maybe a project before you mm-hmm. really partner up. I agree with that. Um, so one of the mindset things that I think it's really important to get into is this idea of sharing, (laughs) which for creative entrepreneurs, when it comes to like us running our like businesses, usually as solopreneurs, this idea of letting someone in and having to share everything about a project or a whole business or whatever it may be, if you don't get back to that kindergarten mindset of let's share, then things are going to go downhill very quickly. Um, You know, for us, it was, for us, it was definitely an adjustment or I guess probably less so than usual because my business is very much mine and David's. Um, Your business is very much so yours and Tara's. So you, I guess we already have a lot of that sharing mentality already built in, which I think we were already sharing with each other. We were as (laughs) as experts and kind of on this mastermind level where we were talking numbers yeah. And there were few people that I would share that kind of information with. You were one of them. So I think that not just sharing, but establishing trust yes. so that you can openly and transparently share. Sure. Well, see, and, and, and the things that you share is really important too, because you do have to share numbers. Like that's one of those things, have those conversations um, early. And we talk about having money conversations early and as often as possible. Um, we talk money all the time um, or sharing roles, like being able to say, like Kathleen and I both design, but I had no problem sharing the design role with Kathleen. Actually, I said have at it because I didn't <laughs> want it. <laughs> so like being able to share your roles and being able to define what those are, but also just feelings in general, which can be really hard hard with or for some people we talk all the time about having hard conversations and that first that first phone call that or Skype call that we had after we decided that we should probably talk about maybe actually doing this 
we asked each other really hard questions and like shared our actual feelings regarding what this was that we were getting into. So just getting into that mindset of sharing and knowing that that a partnership or a relationship on on a collaborative level only is really effective if you're going to share as much as you need to, if not maybe a little bit more, but not too much. <laughs> right. <laughs> and we'll talk about boundaries a little bit a little yeah. bit further into this conversation. <laughs> Um, I also, I want to talk about, so everyone or most of the comments talk about how they don't even know how to get started, but I want to, the mindset shift of just ask yeah, <laughs> or just send an email. Um, I actually, in a, a recent blog post, well, it's not that recent, I guess, about three months ago, I actually blogged the email that I sent Kathleen to ask her if she wanted to collaborate with me on this podcast. So you you, blogged that? How did I, I I miss that. I'm pretty sure I I tagged you in everything. I just didn't see it. I'm sorry. I would have shared it. No, it's fine. Well, we'll put it in the show notes, but, um, but it really is just as easy as sending an email and asking what's the worst case scenario. The worst case scenario is they're going to write back and say no. In which case, what harm does that do? A little bit of rejection is actually good for everyone. <laughs> so, and then you just ask again and you'll find out that getting a no doesn't actually hurt. Um, and getting a yes, like the best case scenario, um, the possibility of that actually happening outweighs a little bit of fear that there is in, in hearing a no. Can I share a story about asking someone to collaborate recently? Yes, you can. Okay. So um, I had, I have a well, a creative colleague, someone that I've worked with before here locally, um, I ran into him at a coffee shop and he was telling me about a cool new project that he was working on. And I was like, oh, can I brand it? Like, let me take it through the braid method. And he was like, yeah, sure. So we met up and we were talking about next steps for that. And then afterwards, I got so excited about his project. I couldn't stop thinking about the business model of it oh. and all the ways it could grow. And I was like, oh my gosh, Kathleen, why are you thinking about this? Like, <laughs> the, the, you, this is none of your business. Serial entrepreneur. I know. So... Um, my husband and I, we invest in real estate. Like, so we buy little rental properties. And recently I thought maybe I should take some of that cash that I would use to buy a rental property and invest in a business. Like I just started getting into that entrepreneurial mindset. So I drafted up a letter to this guy and it was kind of like, Hey, this might be presumptuous, but are you looking for a business partner? Like maybe we should partner up on this thing. And then I let, I let fear get a hold of me and I was like, oh, I'm not going to send that. Am I crazy? Like, what am I thinking? So I didn't send the email and a week later he emailed me and was like, hey, are you interested in partnering up on this? Like, I've thought about having a few different people as a partner and, um, but you and Braid, like, it just makes a lot of sense. And it's definitely not something that I would go into lightly, but I feel more brave going into it. Well, one, because I had had the idea of partnering as well. So it seemed kind of like a universe right? answering the call kind of thing. And then also um, partnering up with you on being boss. Like I've learned that it's not – I mean, I guess before I thought that partnering up in business was practically like getting married, but I'm right. learning that it's really not. Like it really is business and it's really just like doing the work that you would do for someone else anyway, but just making some of the profit off of that. Yeah. And our conversations have been much more official because we don't have the history that you and I have, Emily, or that me and my sister have. So our conversations have been a little bit more official and it's, I've been able to really see kind of what it's like going into a real, I'm doing air quotes, <laughs> a real collaboration or a real partnership where, you know, you have to get lawyers involved early to get things drafted up on paper and LLCs are being amended and that sort of thing. So what I want to say is all of that stuff seems really overwhelming and kind of scary, but it's really not. Like you're just yeah. kind of figuring it out as you go. And so whenever I talk to him about like, hey, how are we going to split the profit? It was the same way that you and I would have the conversation. Yeah. So anyway, so Emily and I, whenever you and I partnered up, I mean, we just decided 
50-50 would be right. the easiest way to do it. Now, another thing when it comes to collaborating is if you have other business partners, and it probably is a good idea to get a lawyer to talk these things through with, um, but that can be kind of pricey. But you have to consider, is it your business that is going into the partnership or is it you that is going into the partnership? And so for me, I decided to just bring my business into the partnership basically so I could use my team as a resource. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I wouldn't have to do it all myself. Um, right. So that's like a big thing to consider whenever having partnerships. But again, if it's just you and just someone else, um, I do think that 50-50 is a pretty easy down the middle way to go. But sure. quantifying that partnership and kind of like the roles and how much is what worth, that gets a little tricky. It does. But, but the key there is that if you're going into a partnership or a collaboration or whatever this is where you're wanting to partner with someone in some way, you have to do it with the idea that it should be bringing mutual success. And it's defining what that is for each party. And for us, it was for us, it was just creating like really badass content and maybe making some money off of it in the future. And, you know, as we grow, we begin thinking about how to monetize that. But in the beginning, it was just creating some content, it being equal work for both of us. Um, and the idea that we were, it was going to be something that we used to elevate each other and to mm -hmm. elevate ourselves. Um, it wasn't something that w was going to drain us. And we had that conversation like, you know, is this something that we have time for? Um, and if you hadn't had time for it, we wouldn't have done it. So you have to go into these things with the idea that it should be uh, for mutual success, not just your own. If you're doing it for your own success, it's the wrong reason to do it. It's going to fall apart. <laughs> um, you should definitely be building each other up and elevating each other's like reach and abilities. Um, and if the trade-off is lopsided, even it out. Um, either give them more of the profits or you take on more work, or whatever it is, so that it's an even trade of money, or no, of energy. <laughs> and yeah. if, um, if you need to trade money for energy and like have things weigh out differently on that side of things, do it. But it should be an even trade-off. And I think that you figure out what's even just by making lists and talking things yeah. out. I mean, it's really, yeah. it's complicated, but it's also not. Yeah, it's also not. You just have to do it. <laughs> All right, let's talk about like the habits and routines of establishing a good creative collaboration. Yeah. Um, so I think that communication style is like a good habit to get into and figuring yes. out how you best communicate. And so like for us, I think establishing Evernote early into mm -hmm. the game. Was, immediately. Yeah, immediately. <laughs> we immediately started an Evernote and that's where we kind of started brainstorming. Mm -hmm. So I think that that has been huge in our success, in our collaboration. Um, also, I mean, we're not in the same city as each other, but right. having a co-working space or yeah. regular huddles, like even here at Braid Creative, we've started doing weekly get-togethers where yeah. we huddle up and we talk about our, you know, just what's on our list, where we need help, um, what kind of great things are going on, things that we want to celebrate, and then where we're struggling and where we need help from our other people. So yeah. that kind of thing has been a really great, but, but back to co-working space, I think that that is, I think identifying um, whether or not you need to be in the same space as the other person is really important. I think that some collaborations, you can probably get away with not being physically next to each other. But I think that a lot of collaborations or partnerships really do benefit from proximity. I agree with that. And and just the, the idea of checking in regularly, period, which is something you talked about, if that has to become a habit of a partnership, period. If, I can't imagine going a week without talking to you, like about something, whether that's an <laughs> email that someone has sent us or like whatever's happening with the next episode or simply that we're launching an episode, actually two episodes every week. Um, we are checking in with each other regularly and not just about not just about work stuff, but also like personal stuff. Like I want to, I want to make sure that my partner in this thing that we're building isn't losing her shit over like, <laughs> I don't know, some cr crap in your life or whatever. Like, you know, we, we definitely have conversations 
beyond business that that assist us in um, in making sure that we're always going to be on the same page and we know what's happening and know what's going on with both the work but also our lives so that we can be just healthy people in general, which I think is really really important. And I think it's uh, I think that's a really good point and remembering that we're friends first. Yeah. And I even think that with my sister, um, whenever it comes to braid creative is that we're sisters first. And so I remember whenever we first started braid, um, there was a lot of tension because I had been working solo for a year and I was real used to just hunkering down at my computer, no music, no interruptions (laughs) and just being able to work. And yeah. that actually kind of sounds like a dream now, <laughs> like just being able to work <laughs> with no interruptions. But my sister had just come from 13 years of working at an open office agency. Mm-hmm. And so she really thrived off of that kind of constant communication and feedback and bouncing ideas off of each other. And I mean, isn't that like the dream if you're starting a business with your sister to be able to like, I don't know, sit side by side and like chat and work on things together. (laughs) So it really was an adjustment for the both of us. And we really did have to meet in the middle. Um, And I would say it took three years to really get into our working stride of um, where I can run across the street. We bought houses across the street from each other. But uh, <laughs> what I, you can, did. I know. So I can run across the street and talk to her. And I never feel like the time that I spend just chatting with her about life is wasted. And I feel the same with you too. Like if, right. we, if we end up chatting for 30 minutes after we record a podcast about life, Right. Which we do. Why often? Yeah, we do. We do. Sometimes (laughs) I'm like, we need to record this. Yeah. Um, But it's not time wasted because it's building the relationship. It's building that trust that you need to have a good collaboration and a good partnership. I agree. I think um, think that what someone said earlier about like the relationship really is the foundation for it. And we will talk in a minute about, uh, you know, tapping your drive and people who you already know to become your collaborators or partners. I think, I mean, if you and I hadn't known, I wouldn't have just emailed you one day and been like, Hey, Kathleen, let's start this, this podcast together. And I want you to treat this like a part-time job. And <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want to launch it in three weeks, which I actually did. Um, <laughs> like I would not have done that if you and I hadn't had um, not only like a personal relationship, we'd also work together on yeah. multiple projects for each other's business. Um, but it's the fact that we had this really great relationship already that then we just threw business partner on top of. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so a lot of our... Um, Facebook group members, they were curious about like, how do you even start a collaboration? How do you approach someone? So yeah. like you said, you, you holler at your friends, but I would yeah. also say even if there's someone that you admire that you would like to work with or that you would be curious about partnering up with, hire them for something. Yes. Hire them to develop out your website. If you're like, maybe you're a designer and you need to find a developer that you can regularly partner up with. Mm-hmm. Hire them. Invest to- in that relationship. Exactly. <laughs> With money. I mean, because yes. you and I have traded thousands yep. and thousands of dollars. Thousands. <laughs> <laughs> we have. Um, and, and I've done the same thing. So people in, in our realm, we all have something to buy. So, or if not even to buy, we all have newsletters. Like I have started so many relationships with people who signed up for Indie Tactics, my newsletter, um, and then just started replying to them. Actually, that's exactly how we got, we landed the Paul Jarvis interview. Exactly. Yeah. And so, and that podcast was a collaboration of the three. And it might, like, who knows what it, I'm not saying that Paul Jarvis is going to be starting a business with us. Big plans for you. That is not true. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that is not true, but but it yeah, is not- a relationship that I would love to keep going and not because like, oh, well, here's what he could do for me, but more like I just like him as a person. So, sure. and I think, and same with Danielle Krista, the jealous curator, I would mm-hmm. love to collaborate with her one day on a project. Who knows what that will be? And it might not be tomorrow. It might, might not be next week. It might be three years from now. Yeah. But I just I think setting the path by inviting people onto your podcast or blogging about them or doing or like investing a, in something that they sell mm-hmm. like yeah buying their artwork or buying their products 
it goes huge or simply hitting reply to their email, like you said. So that's how collaborations start. They start as friendships or they start as communication back and forth. Mm -hmm. So the guy that um, I'm going to be partnering up with or that Braid is going to be partnering up with, I followed his Twitter account for a long time and just kind of like tweeted back and forth Um, and then finally met him in person and was like, hey, we've been tweeting back and forth. So even just a social media relationship, that's, I mean, social media has really leveled the playing field and you can have access to anybody over Twitter or Instagram, you can really start to build up genuine trust, I think. I mean, I know that social media is a little bit of a front, but I think that you really can build genuine trust from following someone um, on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook or wherever they post the most and interacting with them, engaging with them. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how you start. Just begin engaging. Um, I've started lots of relationships just by hitting reply or commenting on a blog post or, or joining someone's mastermind group or whatever, whatever it may be, just take a first step and don't let excuses stop you from doing it. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I'm going to talk about like some boundaries because this is the part where it gets into the logistics that someone mentioned that they were scared of and I get it. Um, So whenever it comes to really successful creative collaborations and partnerships, I think it is Mm -hmm. imperative to have some boundaries in place. Yeah. So I think that the biggest thing you can do from the get-go is define your roles. Define not only like, I mean, pretend like it's a... Like it's a real job. I put yeah, that in make job too. outlines. But it is like creating an organizational chart. So like what is your job title within this partnership? Um, what are the tasks that you do? Write it down on paper or in Evernote where you can both see it outlined. And so again, with us and our partnership, whenever we first started talking about mm-hmm. being boss, I was like, okay, but I'm not doing any of the tech stuff. Like I just right. can't. And you're like, no problem. I got it covered. (laughs) No problem. I'll figure it out. (laughs) (laughs) Then I was like, but I'll do all the branding and the episode agendas and the show notes. Um, You know, so I think that that's how we kind of evened that workload out. It is. Well, and and let's talk about that. So Kathleen, in our our roles of of being boss, you do design, um, design and show notes. And like social media images. You do social media images. You also do email communication. Yeah, I so do a lot of So anyone email. who emails us, Kathleen is the one that, that emails back. And also, here's another sharing thing. Kathleen and I share a Being Boss email address. Like, we don't even have separate email addresses for Being Boss. We share one. Yep. <laughs> so, um, so, Kathleen, you do those things. You do design, show notes, social media images. I and do the agendas. Email. Like, the agendas before we actually oh, start recording do. the episode. So, yep. I'll create a new agenda and kind of say, okay, here's what we're talking about. And I'll actually create spaces for Emily to fill out. Mm -hmm. Um, I also, um, oh, handle sponsorships. You do. I communicate like back and forth with people that are interested in sponsorships. And then also probably a lot of the guests and arranging the guests and making sure that everything's set there. Yes. And then Emily, you do everything else. <laughs> I do all the other things. So I do, um, I do, I, I did the website development and continuing development as we add things like e-commerce. Do you hear that, guys? That's a hint. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also do, I do all the podcast editing. Um, I load the show notes and I like put everything into the system. So it goes to iTunes and, um, like the YouTube video, which I think we actually just spoke and I decided to hand that off to Kathleen to help streamline that process for, for loading up some of the extra content. Um, and what else do I do? Is that all I do? Um, well, we both do a lot of planning. Yes. We're both super involved, obviously, so in like constantly business development. Planning. Mm-hmm. Um, And so I think that whenever it comes down to it, it's like, okay, what is it going to take to create a podcast? And we kind of start to outline what we imagine it will take. And this is for any sort of partnership or creative collaboration. Like walk yourself through mentally what you would be doing in a day, in a week, Mm -hmm. in a month, and just write down all the tasks. And then you can kind of start to assign those tasks 
to the appropriate people. Right. And so, um, for example, this partnership that I'm about to go into, it's like, okay, I can obviously do the branding and mm-hmm. the design. Like that is what I am best at. And so don't take your skills for granted that you already have. Right. Um, and with us, like Emily, you are really good at tech stuff. I would mm-hmm. probably blow my brains out before I could get a podcast <laughs> edited. <laughs> right. Sometimes I want to. <laughs> <laughs> So that's the cool thing about if you're already if you already feel like you have a creative expertise right. is using that expertise and bringing that to the partnership and then and then you know really determining I mean sometimes it's okay to say no to a partnership oh, yeah. and because oh, yeah. if like maybe if your skill sets are too similar or maybe if um, you're I mean, sometimes people are just too similar and they don't complement each other enough. And that's one thing I love about partnering with my sister is she's very methodical and logical and I can just come up with some wild idea and then she kind of figures out how do we actually make it happen and if it really even makes sense or if it's just a scattered idea. Yeah, I think having complementary skills but also complementary like energy yeah, is like how really. Else however, you, you and I are pretty similar in mo- in that way, maybe more so than most. But I'm being like David, for example. Like David and I are the example of like relative husband and wife team who um, who run a business together, who run a creative. We we work together all day, every day, <laughs> and it's really great. But it works really well because I'm like the crazy, like energetic bouncing ideas off the wall person and he's the one sitting there who's like methodically going okay Emily like let's you know does this make sense and do you have time and he's the one who sort of reins me in um and having those complementary energies I think is super important for running something especially long term successfully um and if you are if you clash at all like if Dave and I clashed at all one we wouldn't be together <laughs> but two I certainly would, wouldn't have hired him on to manage my business um and the same thing with you if you and I had ever like clashed before then I wouldn't have asked you to to come be a part of something that I hoped and is proving to be something that's amazing. So um, so define your roles and pick people who pick people who can fill the roles that you can't fill yourself is really really important. Um, I think holding each other accountable uh, holding each other accountable is super important, and it is one of those boundaries. Get over it <laughs> if you have problems with people holding you accountable for things. Mm. Um, that was one of the things that whenever I, um, I contacted Kathleen to say, hey, let's do this, one of my points was we will make each other do this thing. Yeah. And so there are tons of times where I'll send you an, e- an action email that's like, hey, Kathleen, I need you to do this. I and love it whenever you tell me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I... <laughs> I Good. like it. Well, the thing Good. is, is that, I mean, I guess, you know, whenever you're a solopreneur, which I have a team, but whenever you, whenever you're your own boss, right, you are constantly having to make your own decisions. Even the little things, even the, just what to put on your to-do list and what order to do it in. And it's exhausting. And so to have someone else tell you what to do yep. is really a gift, yeah, it's amazing. I, I'm the same way. When we've talked about this, I hate it in the evening whenever David asked me what I want for dinner. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Make the decision for me and then make me eat it. It's fine. Um, so no, I think I think that is huge. And so just the fact that you and I who do have these sort of separate businesses where we get to sort of do whatever we want in some sense, like being able to come together and be just as comfortable having you tell me what to do and vice versa has been super important for making sure that we keep this ball rolling. Because if not, we probably would have done three episodes and just stopped. But instead, us being comfortable holding each other accountable for what comes next is what keeps us doing really, really cool things and getting cool guests and planning really cool projects and all that stuff. So, um, so get used to get used to having people tell you what to do a little bit because it just makes it more amazing. And you know what else? I think that making it real makes it accountable. And I guess what I'm trying to say is. Oh, this yeah. is real. And so I, it felt really real whenever we got our FreshBooks sponsorship. Yep. And so now we're accountable. Like I, I feel right now like we're a little tired. 
<laughs> maybe doing two episodes a week was a little ambitious. Right. And then we're also recording a lot of episodes right now because you're about to take your 40 day road trip. Right. And so we're really busting our ass, but yeah. we've got our recording dates set on the calendar. And I think that if you've been listening to Being Boss for a while, you know how much I love my calendar and setting <laughs> appointments. And we take those appointments seriously. We do. And so, but we also take our sponsorship seriously. And we so do. if we don't put out these episodes, we might get sued. I mean, <laughs> I don't, I mean, we we're we legally bound to a contract with our sponsor now. So, um, and I think that we take each other that seriously too. Whenever there is a date on our calendar, we're always there. We're always on time. We're always recording an episode regardless of how we feel. And that is what it it means to be boss is that you show up and you do the work and it doesn't matter if you're tired. It doesn't matter if you're burnt out. Um, I mean, obviously <laughs> to be don't a good get boss tired and don't get burnt out, <laughs> but if it happens because it will, <laughs> you just got to keep doing it. And, and I agree. I think, I think sponsorships for us has definitely helped hold us accountable for keeping this going. Um, but also just the excitement of like, who else is going to want to be a sponsor? Like those sorts of well, things. Well, and like, our listeners now too hold us accountable. Oh, definitely. Can I you mean, imagine the uproar that would happen if we didn't post an episode? <laughs> the enthusiasm from our listeners yeah. has certainly kept us going. More than anything. Sure. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that comes to any sort of project you're doing, whether or not it's in a partnership or collaboration, but getting feedback, good feedback that you can yeah. hold on to and keep you going um, focus on that stuff in those collaborations. Definitely. Um, I also think that there's nothing wrong with having a trial period for collaborations. Say more about that. So like, well, like you said earlier about, um, about like hiring people and giving them like projects to do before you just hire them outright. Um, or saying, you know, let's, Let's do a one-week blog series or something that's a collaboration with someone, um, with the maybe with the idea that it could go on to be something amazing. But like having a one-week trial period, or just setting dates and saying we're going to try this thing out again, sharing, being super open and transparent with your expectations. Um, do a trial period, see if it works. If it doesn't work, goodbye. <laughs> it was fun. Thanks for trying it. Um, but if it does work, keep doing it. Um, so trial periods for collaborations or partnerships, I think is a good way to test the waters, especially if it's the first one you've ever done. You know, that makes me think it's probably a good idea to always have an exit strategy. And I know that that sounds, um, uh, maybe a little pessimistic. It's kind of like the equivalent of having a prenuptial agreement before you get married. Right. And it's no fun to think about something failing or going awry before you ever begin, but it is so important. And I think that, um, I do it with my husband. Right. So I, we all have always agreed that if this is no longer working for us, we can always split up. Yep. Um, which is kind of the beauty of being in a second marriage. <laughs> Right. Well, and David and I have had that same conversation. We're like, if you ever get tired of me, let me know and we'll go. Like, <laughs> And you know, you and David aren't married, correct? Right. We're not married. And so it's kind of like this, we're choosing to be together. But this is not a relationship show. But I think that the same thing the applies same thing. to partnerships. And so even with my sister, we'll often have a conversation. And I think having these conversations of what would we do if we weren't doing braid Right. Um, I think it kind of just allows us to not take what we're doing together for granted. Mm -hmm. It also, there's something about having a little bit of freedom that makes you want to stay where you are. Yep. So well, also just ha being, or having the other person be okay with you dreaming otherwise. Yeah. Because otherwise, like you're going to have thoughts of what would happen. What would happen if we didn't do this podcast? I haven't had that thought yet, though. But like, let's say we get tired after busting out three episodes a week. <laughs> yeah, let's uh, let's have this conversation right yeah. now in front sure, of our why listeners. Not? So, and, okay, what would happen if we decide not to do this podcast? How do you think? Would we just say, okay, our our sponsor contract is going to be up, you know, right? on this date? Let's reassess and maybe only do yeah. one. Do you think that we would tiptoe our way out of it and say, let's just have one episode per week? And then, 
or less it depends. Just, or maybe I we mean, work in seasons and then after the season is over, whenever we come back, maybe we actually reassess whether or not we still want to do this. Sure. I mean, either way. And, and that's the thing. It's just simply being like open to that conversation. Like for me, if it came down to it and I just really didn't ever want to do one again, like we would just stop, I would imagine. Like okay, once a what contract. If, what stopped. if I didn't want to stop? What if oh. I was like, I want to keep being boss? And see, okay, this is where, this is my next point, which is get right. it on paper and make it legal. <laughs> so Emily and I have not done this yet, which right. means that we just really implicitly is, This has kind other. of been our trial period in a lot of ways. It I has. Mean, we, we just wanted to see if this thing was going to work. And then we ended up getting sponsorships and we've grown hugely. We made it to number two recently in business and <laughs> on iTunes. So like we obviously see this is going to happen. And part of my road trip, um, is to come to Oklahoma City so that we can actually get some of this stuff on paper because trial period is over. I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. I hope you don't either, Kathleen. But let's <laughs> say one of us wanted to quit. It's, it's interesting because the potential for being boss is huge, yeah. but we're not really making much revenue no now. Right. So like, would it be that you just hand it over? Like, Let's say I wanted to continue sure. doing being boss. Would it be like, all right, well, I'm going to keep it. Right. Or would it be that I need to buy you out? And then how much is your half of being boss worth monetarily? Maybe right. it's just the amount that it took that you would charge to set up a website. Right. Or, you know, so hmm. these are all questions to consider. Sure. This is stuff that we need to think about. And it's stuff that yes. you need to think about whenever you go into a partnership is – how you're going to get out of that partnership. Yeah, definitely. We'll definitely have that conversation. <laughs> get that lawyer in the room. Kathleen. Right. It's going to get okay, dirty. Okay, here's the other thing. Let's <laughs> say you can't afford a lawyer or you just feel overwhelmed by that. Right. I don't think you need a lawyer to make it official and get it on paper right. to start with. So I would say just draft up like what you want. So draft up what your roles are, what your goals are, um, how much time you can dedicate to the project. So literally write down, I will be spending X amount of hours a week on this project that will mm -hmm. typically be on Fridays or whatever that looks like. Um, talk about the money, you know, yep. and, and how you're splitting the money. So all of these, these things are really important. And then talk about the worst case scenario. So I think maybe our real worst case scenario is that one of us doesn't want to do it anymore, but the other right. does. Yeah. How do you handle that? Is there a buyout? And so just get all of these things drafted up on paper, mm -hmm. date it and sign it. Uh, maybe even send it through something like Adobe Echo Sign, which they just changed their name. I know. I wish they'd stop changing the name of things. I, know. I don't know what it is now, <laughs> but that's what I use for contracts yeah. in my business. So, I mean, that's even something that you and I, Emily, that we could do before we ever have a lawyer look at it. And then basically right. what we could do is have a lawyer look at these terms and conditions that we've drawn up in plain speak, and they could say, oh, but have you considered X, Y, and Z? They could probably throw right. a, cl a couple of clauses in there to make it just really official so that we could then file that paperwork with the state and be a legit business. Right. Yeah. I, I think it's do as it. simple as that. Well, it, it is more or less. I mean, sure, we could, I don't know. Actually, Kathleen, as we grow our online media conglomerate, <laughs> which is what we're doing here, right? I mean, we'll definitely have to reassess things. And I think that's something you have to go into it thinking as well, is that you will have to continually reassess things. So in our current state, if we're just going to be doing our sponsorships, um, then, you know, what does that buyout or, or exit strategy look like? And then once we launch something amazing and we're making millions and millions of dollars, or whatever it looks like, then we'll have to reassess that and see see where we are then because at that point we've put so much more of our energy into it. So regardless of like what we're doing, reassess. Like as things grow, um, you'll be reassessing, but you do have to have a starting place. And Kathleen and I had that starting place. Like those first emails that we that we did whenever I first asked Kathleen to do this, we definitely outlined like, okay, look, no one's quitting their job, obviously, to do this full time. <laughs> like that is not what we're doing. Um, it's going to be like part time side hustle. Here are the things that we're going to do. Um, Let's do it for a while and see what happens. And, and I think even now we're coming against new issues as we start to create new products. Yeah. And as they start to be built out of our being boss expertise, really. Right. Yeah. And so then it's like, okay, 
Um, do we share this? Do we split it? If we have clients, because we do similar things. I mean, I think that in our businesses, we're so complimentary, but still we can do similar things. Right. And so it's like, do we have a non-compete? How does that right. work? And I think in other partnerships, that might be more glaring than in our partnership. Sure. Um, but it's just like all stuff to think about. So it is. Well, and, and that's it. Say, just think about it. <laughs> just think about it, but then also talk about it out yeah. loud and be yes. clear on what you expect. That way there's never a question. Or that way whenever you bring it, something else up, it's not awkward because you've been talking this whole time about tough stuff. Right. Oh, I know. If we hadn't had these tough conversations and I came in here one day and was like, so what are we doing about that FreshBooks sponsorship money? Like at that point, it's kind of weird. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it's not because we've literally talked about it every step of the way. Like as many or at any point, if you and I, well, you or I have a hard question that just sort of pops up, we don't sit on it. Like we're not sitting there talking to everyone else around or, or everyone else around us about we it. We don't have time. We don't I know, have time I don't to have talk time. to everyone else. I have time to talk to one person and that is you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What are like some super um, actionable tactics and to do's that people can do if they want to collaborate with someone? Um, one of my favorite things is to just make a plan and set deadlines. Period. Mm -hmm. Actually, oh, here's a really, oh, fun, let's talk about this. So I've told you about this, Kathleen, but in June, no, July, I'm doing a collaboration with Crafted Taste, which is um, a really cool, like, cocktail subscription service, like a oh, right. subscription box service. And that, this was the first thing that we did. So we're going to be talking, or I'll be talking about this a lot on my social media stuff coming up because it's really awesome. But we're doing an indie shopography branded box for Crafted Taste, and I get to, like, make all the cocktails, recipes, and stuff. And the first thing that we did after deciding that we wanted to do this together was we made a plan of all the actionable things that need to be done. So we needed to, like come up with recipes, think of all the like items that go into the cocktail box. And then we set deadlines for every step of the project. And um, we shared it. I added everything to my calendar. And so now we actually have a roadmap for going forward because you can't really do anything unless you know what you're going to do and when it needs to be done. Um, so that for me is like one of the like most actionable tactics you can take is whatever project that you're wanting to collaborate with someone, break it down into a plan and then set deadlines and then who the deadlines are for. So if it's, if it's my deadline as opposed to Kat's deadline or and being boss, if it's my deadline to get e-commerce developed so that you can write content for whatever, like we have those plans set out and deadlines in place um, so that we both treat it with the same seriousness. Like we know exactly what needs to happen to get this done. Um, and it becomes something that actually happens as opposed to just a couple of emails that get fired off, but nothing ever comes of it. <laughs> I love it. I, and yes, setting deadlines, like that's how you make stuff happen. Yeah. And figuring out what you do to need, what you need to do to make that happen. Yeah. Um, I think that my biggest tactic to do whenever it comes to collaborating, especially on projects where it's new territory and you're you're kind of stepping outside of your comfort zone, is to make a list and on the left side, write down I am, draw a line down the middle. On the right side, write I am not. And just say like, I am a creative director. I am a branding expert. I am comfortable showing up and being seen and saying whatever. I am not a web developer. I am not a podcast editor. I am not a journalist. Right. I am not, you know, and so I think it kind of really helps make it clear what you can bring to the partnership and what you cannot bring to the partnership. So I think that that would be my biggest, um, to do for other people to try whenever it comes to figuring out what they're best at and what they need help with. Yeah, I think that would also be a really fun like first um, activity for you and someone that you want to partner with to do together-ish. Yeah. So you both do it and then you both share and see if your skills are going to be complementary um, or not. Because if for the web development slash branding expert side of things, like 
you do brand, I do website. If you had brought that to me and you didn't do website and I didn't do website, then we're going to have to hire someone to do a website <laughs> yeah. or something like that. So being able to lay those things side by side with those of your partners yep. um, and seeing what you guys can do well together, what you guys can do to complement each other and what's going to be missing so that you know like where you're going to have to put some additional energy or money to find someone who will do it. Um, I think it's really important. So that's good one, Kathleen. I liked that. Thanks. <laughs> All right. How are we going to recap this? I don't even know what we said anymore. Oh. <laughs> okay, so recap of of how to collaborate like a boss or collaborating like a boss. What did we call it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let me look at my Evernote. Yeah, here it is. All right. Collaborate so, like a boss. Recap. Go. Who's going? Me go? Oh, you God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We apparently need to work on our collaboration <laughs> skills a little bit. It's so Monday, if you're watching this tired. on YouTube, probably the iTunes version is far more edited. <laughs> like you're really getting some bloopers today. You are. High five, guys. <laughs> All um, right. So collaborate like a boss. Here's a recap. Start with smaller collaborations, even just brainstorming or project work together, and then outline your worst case scenario and your best case scenario. Um, share, <laughs> learn to share everything because that is the foundation for everything that you're doing in a shared collaboration or partnership. Um, also just ask everything else that's keeping you from actually sending that email or making that phone call is just an excuse because worst case scenario is that they'll simply say no. And that's really not that bad. <laughs> uh, get your communication down. So whether that's an Evernote texting, emails, phone, and really establish a communication style, what works best for you and your collaborative partner. Yes, and check in regularly. Being able to talk to your partner constantly, no, not constantly, that's far too much. Being able to talk to them regularly and checking in on the status of products or projects um, or simply how they're doing in general, which could affect the, the work that they're doing with you um, is super important. So make it make time in your calendar to simply have chats with your collaborator. All right. Who are you going to collaborate with? Your friends. This might be your online buddies. It might be friends that you already have in real life. Um, your friends, it's really the best place to start whenever it comes to collaborating with someone. Yes. And set some serious boundaries. Have goals. Define your roles. And hold each other accountable for getting shit done. <laughs> and that's it. That's yeah. it. Otherwise, do it. Just do it. Because such really great things happen from collaborating with others and being able to expand your reach by partnering with someone who can assist you in doing really big, amazing things is how especially online entrepreneurialism works. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you for listening to Being Boss from Emily Thompson and Kathleen Shannon. Find the show notes for this episode at lovebeingboss.com. Listen to past episodes and subscribe to new episodes on our website, at iTunes, on SoundCloud, and Stitcher. If you like our podcast, please show us some love by reviewing Being Boss on iTunes and sharing it with a friend. Do the work, be boss, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>